Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. So we had more disappointing data come out of China there on Sunday, industrial production missing forecasts. And you couple that together with the FOMC, which uh, the two-day meeting starts Wednesday, finishes on Thursday with the announcement of the uh, interest rate decision. Uh, it promises to be quite uh, an interesting week, but until Thursday, uh, the markets are probably going to be in a bit of a sideways moving um, kind of formation as basically everyone's just waiting to find out if um, if it's going to be September or more likely obviously December for that first rate hike and with all the volatility in the markets for the last um, couple of weeks well since the 24th of August really um, there's a lot of big question marks about the uh, the validity of, of raising now I guess the reality is if you raise it in September or December it's only two months difference it's not really got a huge amount but um, there's about a 50-50 chance some commentators feel that we're going to have that rate hike in September uh, but certainly there has been a lot of volatility. Chinese stock markets down about 3%, 3.5% uh, following that disappointing data. But as you can see, the US 30 is very much uh, just grinding along, um, not doing a huge amount today uh, to, to kickstart of the week. 21 period SMA capping any potential gains. It was trying to go into positive, positive territory earlier on, but as you can see by the tip of this candle right here, uh, we're currently in negative territory. We've, almost, we've had a, a bullish crossover in the MACD a number of sessions ago, but that's fail, failed to materialise in any decent game. Uh, and as I said, we're not likely to see anything that significant until after we get the FOMC uh, result out on Thursday. And I think that's about 6 or 7 p.m. UK time, but we'll check that in a second. So looking at the UK 100, uh, in between two ranges, 62.96 being potential resistance and 60.73 being potential support. Trading below the 21 period SMA, other technicals are, are relatively neutral. We obviously had a bullish crossover on the MACD, um, but that, uh, that ship has sailed. Uh, graveyard doji formation adding pressure on the UK 100 and with slowdown in China commodity prices must be getting uh, a little bit of pressure on them which will again be pushing the UK 100 down a little bit more because of our heavy weighting with mining and oil so Japan 225 obviously big connection to China and um, with industrial output there dropping you can see Japan 225 has got currently a bearish engulfing pattern uh, over the previous two days candles with um, 18306 acting as potential resistance has been in play now or stayed uh, as a potential resistance level for a number of sessions. Obviously, it got broken out here, but still close below it. We're now looking at 17,496 as being potential support. Uh, moving on to dollar yen, um, big question marks over the FOMC means the dollar doesn't really know which direction it wants to go. And uh, we're currently losing a bit of momentum against the yen, so people are safe haven buying the Japanese yen at the expense of the US dollar. And we'll have a look at GBP, USD, and your dollar in a second. But 121.87 is potential resistance. Looks to be that 21 period SMA is acting as potential resistance as well. It's failed to break above there over the last four sessions, with 119 being the next potential support level to be aware of. So looking at West Texas crude, uh, 45.85 acting is quite an interesting resistance level there, um, with $42 being the next potential support. Um, we are in the middle of two ranges, I guess, right now, but we're closer to the resistance than we are to the support. We almost have a crossover on the MACD. The other technicals are relatively neutral. And obviously, with the lack of global demand, um, China is slowing down, blah, blah, blah. Whenever a negative bit of Chinese data comes out, that does have a negative impact on West Texas crude. So looking at gold, not doing huge amounts as we had this big move to the downside there on Tuesday, la on Wednesday last week. Um, probably expect to see a flat line uh, on gold until we get FOMC out of the way. So finishing up your dollar and GBP USD. So your dollar uh, making some, um, some interesting headway there uh, with one spot 14.74 being an exponential resistance. Uh, we are looking at about seven positive days right there. Bullish crossover in the MACD, uh, trading above and moving averages. So your dollar looks a little bit more bullish in the short term. But remember, one spot 14.74 being potential resistance. And then if we have a look at uh, GBP USD, uh, we are above one spot 54.24. Next potential resistance, one spot 56. We're trading just below the moving averages just now. Bullish crossover in the MACD, bullish cross on the slow stochastic. Um, it'd be interesting to see if we can get some extra momentum at GBP USD. Uh, and today we've got Eurozone Industrial Production at 10 a.m. UK time. Uh, Tuesday brings with us a whole host of CPI data, uh, PPI data from the UK, uh, and the ZEW business report from Germany. That's a big one. Retail sales, big one again. Um, and then let, let's actually fast forward on to Thursday so I can get the FOMC time. It's 7 
p.m. UK time. So actually, there is a lot of data between now and then actually coming out. Uh, but I'd be surprised if we saw anything that significant in the equity markets until we get that FOMC out of the way. So as ever, guys, keep your eye on the chart forum. Make it it's probably a layout going forward. Join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.